Hi, I'm Anastasia McCourt, and this is my poi piece for Neo Show. We once were warriors, bone sharp and tangling up with whatever wild was in the world. But some ships rolled in with folk we had never seen before, burning iron and bullet men, taking everything and leaving behind only misery. You'll kick in Hawaii, get go over street artist caricature. Colorful fabric peeks out from the bottom of their oversized coats. But still, they blend in seamlessly, enjoying a moment of beautiful anonymity, something they've struggled to have since escaping captivity at the hands of Nigeria's extremist group, Boko Haram. According to the U.S. National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, roughly 800,000 kids are reported missing a year. That's approximately 2,000 per day. And the city in the entire world with the second highest rate of kidnapping is Phoenix, Arizona. It doesn't help that in cases with older kids, Typically, I could drive to Phoenix and back before a formal and official investigation would be lodged. Through the pieces, these girls escaped Boko Haram by National Geographic. Kidnapping hostage taking a review of effects, coping, and resilience by the United States National Library of Medicine. And the poem The Children Might Know by Dominique Krista who explore the idea that the more we do for each victim in the family, the less we'll have. Because for every missing poster we ignore, another one is in. We never thought that we could escape. In general terms, the psychological impact of being taken hostage is similar to that of being exposed to other trauma, including terrorist incidents and disasters. Typical adult reactions include one, cognitive impaired memory and concentration, confusion and disorientation, intrusive thoughts, flashbacks and memories, denial, hypervigilance and hyperarousal. Hyperarousal is a state of feeling too aroused with a profound fear of another incident. Two, emotional shock and numbness, fear and anxiety, but panic is not common. Guilt at having survived if others have died and for being taken hostage in the first place. Three, social withdrawal, irritability, avoidance of reminders of the event. We never thought that we would escape and be here today. I never thought that I would survive. I know that I had left thousands behind in the bushes, in the forest, and thousands more in the streets of Mongeri. The best I can do now is reach out to the world to help. Denial has often been mainlined as a response to extreme stress, but it has survival value, at least in the short term, by allowing an individual a delayed period of time in which he or she can adjust to a new painful reality. For example, some hostages in the Moscow theater siege initially believed that the heavily armed rebels was all just a part of a musical military performance. Maybe they know we ain't always been so lovely, so feverish with brokenness. So maybe they'll look past the bruises and see that we are bigger underneath and forgive us for our fragility. Genuine psychopathy has also been noted. A follow-up study of ransom victims in Sardinia found that about 50% suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder and 30% experienced major depression. The International Classification of Mental and Behavioral Disorders also recognizes the enduring personality change after a catastrophic experience as a possible chronic outcome after a hostage incident. This condition is characterized by a hostile or mistrustful attitude, social withdrawal and estrangement, feelings of emptiness and hopelessness, 
and a chronic feeling of being on edge as if constantly threatened. To be clear, for this diagnosis to be made, the symptoms must have endured for at least two years. You know, Kiki and Awai, identified only by their first names for security reasons, didn't know each other before or even during their ordeals. But their shared horrors united them in advocating for fellow survivors and those still held by Boko Haram. We were overcome with the kind of meanness that don't care about nothing but feeding itself. We had hands once and a river to bathe in, and names, phone banks, that called us home. Boko Haram skyrocketed the global consciousness in 2014 when the group's kidnapping of 276 girls from their school in Chibok, Nigeria, sparked a world war campaign and the hashtag, bring back our girls. But the group has actually been waging a brutal campaign in northeastern Nigeria since 2009, forcing 2.5 million people from their homes, killing more than 20,000, and abducting thousands more, using the women and girls as child brides and sex slaves. And their kids are often forced to become the next wave of Boko Haram insurgents. The children might know that if they're looking at us right, we lost our mouth across a mighty, mighty ocean, could have died. But we just didn't know how. Thank you.